Our next guest, retired Army Lieutenant General Claude Mick Kicklider, was selected to oversee the Vietnam 50th Anniversary Commemoration Program. The program has five objectives. To thank and honor veterans of the Vietnam War, including personnel who were held as POWs or listed as MIAs, for their service and sacrifice on behalf of the United States, and to thank and honor their families. To highlight the service of the armed forces during the Vietnam War and the con contributions of the federal agencies and governmental agencies and non-government organizations that serve with or in the support of the armed forces. To pay tribute to the contributions made on the home front by the people of the United States during the Vietnam War. To highlight the advances in technology, science, and medicine related to military research conducted during the Vietnam War to recognize the contributions and sacrifices made by the allies of the United States during the Vietnam War. Lieutenant General Kicklider served 35 years in the United States Army and retired in 1991. He had two tours of duty in Vietnam from February 1966 through February 1967 with the 1st Logistical Command and from August 1970 until August 1971 as Assistant Chief of Staff, G4, for the 101st Airborne Division. Uraz, who said that? He was commanded at all levels through, through Division Command. He served as the commander of the U.S. Army Pacific Commander, 25th Infantry Division, and the commander of the U.S. Army Security Assistance Command. He also served as director of the Army Staff. Lieutenant General Kicklider's military awards include the Distinguished Service Medal, the Defense Service Medal, the Legion of Merit, and the Bronze Star Medal. Since retiring from active duty service, Lieutenant General Kicklider has continued to serve the nation in a number of senior positions with the Department of Defense, State, and Veterans Affairs. He has received the Presidential Citizens Medal, the Eisenhower Liberation Medal, decorations for exceptional civilian service, and is a two-time recipient of the Department of Defense Medal for Distinguished Public Service. Most recently, he served as director of the Center for Infrastructure Protection and Homeland Security at George Mason University. Lieutenant General Kicklider also served as the executive director of the 50th anniversary of World War II Commemoration Committee and also provided oversight for the writing of the plan for the commemoration of the 50th anniversary of the Korean War. Comrades and, and sisters, please give a warm welcome to an outstanding leader and a fellow VFW Life member, Lieutenant General Mick Kicklider. General. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Look forward to working with you in the future. Thank you. Thank you very much, Commander in Chief Hamilton. And I can't tell you what an honor and privilege it is to be with so many of my fellow VFW members from all across this nation and the auxiliary. And what a great honor it is for me to also have an opportunity to provide a very brief update on our nation's program to commemorate the 50th anniversary of the Vietnam War. I'd like to begin this presentation with a short video that captures why it's important that we commemorate this anniversary. Can I help you? Just a cup of coffee, please. Coming right up. Oh, there's no charge. Thank you. Here you go. Thanks again. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your support. Can I take a picture? Sure. Sir, my son would 
I'd like to ask you a question. Are you a hero too? That man said you were. I just served as best I could. Can we take a picture? Sure. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your support. Can I get you a refill? Congress passed a law that authorized DOD to organize, recruit, and support events all across America to assist a grateful nation in thanking and honoring our Vietnam veterans and their families, especially families who lost loved ones during that war, our Gold Star families. The centerpiece of this commemoration will be the Vietnam veterans and their families, but at each event, we want to make sure that we thank and honor all veterans and their families, especially the World War II veterans who are disappearing all too fast, the Korean War veterans, Desert Storm veterans, but especially the men and win, women who are coming off today's battlefields from Iraq and Afghanistan. I just don't know the right words to say what a magnificent job and how much we owe those men and women today. To accomplish this mission, we're recruiting commemorative partners all across this great land, towns, cities, states, corporations, associations, schools, military installation, active guard, reserve units, and especially veteran service organizations like the VFW and the Auxiliary. With your help and leadership, we want to thank and honor our Vietnam veterans where they live, in their hometowns. And with our VFW posts and our ladies' auxiliaries, we can do that. The Vietnam War was a long war. Consequently, this commemoration will be long. We'll execute it in three phases. Phase one will be from now until the end of 2014. This is our preparation phase. We're recruiting, organizing, and supporting commemorative partners and already supporting events all across America. And during this phase, we're doing much, much more. During phase two is the execution phase. This is 2015 to 2017. We want to kick this phase off with a joint meeting of Congress. And then we're asking our commemorative partners to conduct two events in each hometown each year for this period. We want to light up America, and we want no Vietnam veteran not to be properly thanked and honored by their hometown. We're requesting each mil major military unit that participated in the war to invite all their veterans and their families to come back home to their unit during this period. We're asking each military installation to conduct an open house each year and involve all the communities around that installation. We're asking all the Guard and Reserve units to recruit and support the hometowns where they're located. And we move in the sustainment phase, which runs from 2018 to 2025. We'll continue to support commemorative partners and events. We'll also continue to emphasize education and history but we want to make sure before we close this commemoration out, we have the legacy properly reflected of this great generation. 
As you may recall, on Memorial Day 2012, at a ceremony hosted by the Secretary of Defense at the Vietnam National Memorial in Washington, we announced to our nation the program to commemorate the 50th anniversary of the Vietnam War. In attendance was our Commander-in-Chief, President Obama, who was our keynote speaker, and Mrs. Obama, Vice President, and Dr. Biden, the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, and almost the entire senior chain of command was there. Senator Hagel was the chairman of our advisory committee at that time and is now our secretary, introduced our president. Bob Wallace and his wife was there and so was Fred Burns. But the VIPs that day were the Vietnam veterans and their families, especially families who'd lost loved ones and families who have loved ones that are still missing and unaccounted for from that war. But the Gold Star family members laid the wreaths and were escorted by our senior leaders. And let me quote from a few lines from my Commander in Chief's remarks that day, which kind of captures the message of this commemoration. And I quote, and one of the most painful chapters in our history was Vietnam, most particularly how we treated our troops who served there. You were often blamed for a war you didn't start when you should have been commended for serving your country with valor. You were sometimes blamed for the misdeeds of a few when the honorable service of the many should have been praised. You came home and somewhat times were denigrated when you should have been celebrated. It was a national shame, a disgrace that should have never happened. And that's why here today, we resolve that it will never happen again." End of quote. <clears throat> Let me add one additional quote by General Fred Wyan who served in World War II in the China-Burma-India Theater. He commanded an infantry battalion in some of the toughest fighting in the Korean War. He commanded and led the 25th Division uh, into Vietnam. It was promoted and later commanded two field forces. And he was promoted and was our last four-star commander in Vietnam. And he was selected as our seventh, 27th Chief of Staff of the U.S. Army. General Fred Wyan had this to say. What particularly haunts me, what I think is one of the saddest legacies of the Vietnam War, is the cruel misperception that the American fighting men there did not measure up to their predecessors in World War II and Korea. Nothing could be further from the truth." End of quote. During the past eight months, we have been uh, recruiting commemorative partners. And as of today, we have more than 4,700 that have joined this effort. This is a good start, and it's ahead of schedule. But we need your help to keep this list growing. We're encouraging all of our 7,400 plus VFW posts and more than 4,200 ladies auxiliaries to become commemorative partners and to help recruit, organize, and lead events in your hometowns so that we can thank and honor every Vietnam veteran and their families where they live. It costs nothing to become a commemorative partner, and the application blank is online, and you can go online to apply, or you can stop by our booth and we'll assist you. Once you become a commemorative partner, you'll receive a certificate authorizing you to be an, an integral part of this, signed by the Secretary of Defense and the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. You'll also receive a presidential proclamation signed by our President. You'll receive the congressional objectives that you heard the Commander-in-Chief read earlier. And also, you'll receive something very special, and that's our commemorative flag. We want this, we want this flag all across America 
And when our veteran sees this flag and their families, they will know that a grateful nation does remember and honors their service, sacrifice, and valor. Together, we have the opportunity to turn back the pages of history and right a wrong that should not have occurred 50 years ago. And now as I close, I'd like to present a certificate of service to a great American patriot and a friend of long standing, and I'll read in part. This certificate of service is presented to Mr. Alan Gunner Kent, Adjutant General, He wouldn't let me do this. <laughs> Mr. Alan Gunner Kent, Adjutant General of the Veterans of Foreign Wars of the United States of America, in recognition of more than 40 years of tireless devotion to supporting the needs of veterans and their families. In 1968, with 10 years of military service, which included the tour of duty in Vietnam, Gunner started working with veterans while still on active duty with the Marine Corps. By joining VFW Post 2811 in Gainesville, Florida. Since his retirement from the military in 1982, Gunner has continued serving his fellow veterans and their families in such posts as the VFW National Commander from 1994 to 1995, where he and the VFW played a major role in supporting this nation in commemorating the 50th anniversary of World War II. He later served as a Veteran Service Organization's liaison in the Department of Veterans Affairs and many other key positions in the Department of Veterans Affairs. Mr. Kent and the VFW have provided unwavering support to the United States of America's Vietnam War commemoration by assisting our nation a grateful nation in thanking and honoring our Vietnam veterans and their families, for which we are truly grateful. God bless all of our veterans. God bless our men and women serving on today's battlefield. God bless America. Thank you very much.